Okay, everyone, welcome to the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call for June 16th, 2021. Um, the Etherpad link with the agenda and sign in has been put into the chat. Um, we can post it in again if somebody can't see that. And I guess that's it for welcome. Um, looks like Wilma has added some announcements to the um, Etherpad. Um, Wilma, do you want to talk about those or do you want me to go ahead and just list them off? Or? Um, I can just mention real quickly, it, it, I think we announced it last time too, but if you haven't seen it yet, the, uh, the new um, SakaiLMS.org website is live. Um, so you can check it out. We just kind of freshened up the look a little bit, and there's some new video um, stories on there. So, uh, so that's uh, pretty cool if you haven't seen it. Um, and hopefully, many of you attended Open Aperio last week. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly when the um, recordings will be available, but they will be available soon on the Aperio YouTube channel. So keep an eye out for those. Um, and all of the um, breakout sessions and lightning talks were recorded so those should be available uh, before too long um, and the uh, the Sakai 21.1 release is um, expected at the end of this week we were hoping to get it out before open a period but there were a couple of, of issues that were still kind of pending um, and that didn't get resolved in time so that's expected to be released um, by the end of this week which would be uh, June 18th those are all my announcements Okay, thank you, Wilma. Um, so today's presentation is going to be about the new dashboard um, and talking about feedback and discussion on new or improved widgets that could be included in the new dashboard. Um, and that will be presented by Wilma Hodges from Longsite. Uh, yeah, I actually thought Josh was going to do this, so I'll <laughs> do my best to stand in for him. Um, but let me here. Let me just share my screen. And at Open Imperio, there we go. Um, at Open Imperio, Josh did a session um, called Dashboard Dreaming. It was during one of our um, sponsor uh, time slots. Um, so that we would have something to talk about. And basically the idea was to, to break people up to do a brainstorming exercise. Um, and um, he put everybody in groups and then had groups come up with ideas for widgets. And then those groups combined with other groups and kind of selected what they thought that their top widget was. Um, so I'm gonna start at the bottom basically the two that, that surfaced at the end um, as far as uh, from, from this particular group of the two top widgets that people thought were kind of their favorite. Um, and just so that you guys know what on earth I'm talking about when I say um, dashboard, if you have not seen dashboard, it is a new tool. Let me just um, log in here. Actually, I'm locked in already. Okay, so this is the dashboard tool, and it's in the home site. It can also be added to an individual course site, um, but you've got kind of, it welcomes the user. You've got a message of the day up here that can be collapsed. And you have what's called the task list, and you get announcements from all your courses. There's also, if you edit it, there's other widgets that you can add and remove. Um, there's a calendar, a grades widget, and um, there's also a discussions widget. Now, you'll know that these are really long. There's a fix that has not been applied to this um, particular server yet that pages them so you don't get this huge long list. You get like 10 or so, and then it pages to the next one. Um, but, um, but the idea is that this would be sort of a modular um, thing that you could add and remove widgets and move them around on your screen so that it shows the ones that you want to see when you log in. 
And um, right now we're starting with sort of the, the bare bones of the, the few that were developed as part of the tool development, but we'd like to know what other widgets would be useful on this dashboard for people. And so um, out of the uh, dashboard dreaming uh, session at, at Open Aperio, the two that bubbled up were, um, one of them would be a do soon widget that would have an overview of what's coming and students could maybe change the time frame on it, um, specify how many days, and then it would pull from all sorts of tools. So it would pull from assignments, gradebooks, Samago. Um, there could be a little bit of overlap with the task widget because um, the task widget does show you upcoming tasks like assignments um, would show up in the task widget automatically. Um, and we're hoping that that would consume other tools as well. Right now it's just assignments. Um, and then let's see, there was another suggestion for uh, support for undated items. So things that don't have a date could still show up somewhere. Um, so that was one of the ideas. And then the other one was that came out of the other uh, combinations of groups um, is a how are you feeling today widget that would ask users how they feel when they log in and point them to relevant resources based on their answer. So sort of a um, promoting, you know, um, mental health and, uh, you know, a feeling of inclusiveness um, probably would only be in the home dashboard since it's kind of an individual user type widget, not really a course um, widget. So those were the two that kind of came out of the conversation that day. And um, and I'd like to get the thoughts from the folks that are here today. Um, what do you think about those? You like them, not like them? You have other um, things that you would like to add about either of those? Uh, this is Mark speaking. I, I wasn't able to attend the session and uh, I'm certainly regretful of that now, um, especially especially after seeing all these great ideas. I, I think these are both excellent. Uh, one, and like many institutions, we uh, reached out to a lot of um, a lot of members of our community uh, it, it, you know recently uh, just to get a sense of how they were adapting to the uh, the current normal and um, certainly um, uh, Mental well-being was uh, one of the challenges uh, that arose, uh, I think, fairly prominently. So, something that addresses that um, in such a light touch way uh, is an excellent idea, and that's the the second point. Um, do soon's great as well uh, for all the obvious reasons. Uh, is there some capacity pl that's planned for um, external tools to be hooked into uh, into this? Uh, this location, this locale, or you mean the dashboard? Yeah, um, we have had people. We've done a number of focus groups and things about um, dashboard as part of the development. And I know that one of the things that came out of the focus groups was people wanted like an LTI widget um, that would maybe surface things that were coming from LTI tools. Um, so th that was a. It, it was not terribly well scoped. <laughs> But there was definitely the sense that people wanted to be able to tie in those integration tools um, and see them on there, not just the native Sakai tools. Yeah, and acknowledging the uh, the scope challenge, certainly. <laughs> what types of LTIs would you want to see represented? And it would, um, how would you like to see that information appear? That's a good question. Um, a lot of a lot of the third-party tools that we're using are LTA sometimes uh, because the vendor didn't want to develop um, a more API-based integration with Sakai. Um, so, uh, for example, uh, our, our course evaluations um, might be, uh, which we do with um, a product called Blue that I, I think is, is fairly uh, popular amongst higher ed, um, and I imagine some folks in this call have uh, used it or either heard of it, but uh, we we have a fairly standard LTI uh, connection that can exist just in the home tool as um, as an option, a, a tool uh, or a page. 
uh, and as well, we're able to reproduce that within individual course sites. But um, to be able to do that within a widget might serve to uh, to surface that that product um, would be helpful in that process. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking probably like a widget for a specific LTI tool, not like a combined thing. Mm -hmm. So like if you had blue, you'd have a blue widget. If you had I don't know, turn it in maybe or or something else. Maybe turn it in is not the best example. Um, maybe McGraw Hill. Like you have like McGraw Hill content. You might have a McGraw Hill widget. Right. Yeah. Um, a, a good idea. Um, and yeah, that is I, I, without being aware of it, that was what I, I think I was thinking that a widget would encompass the processes of just one external uh, service or source. Mm -hmm. Laura is saying in the in the chat, a configurable widget for any LTI tool could work too. Can you expand on that a little bit, Laura? In the same manner that you can install any number of uh, external tools, uh, this would just be exposing uh, them at the course level, one or many. Uh, like we do sometimes with uh, URLs to other websites, you know, you'd have you can put it on the left hand nav bar, or you can um, yeah. just just include content from it. Uh, That's a I good idea. Think, yeah, I don't think the widget would necessarily be uh, full functional in that it. It could have pieces of content, deep content linking, but it it could um, signal right there on the dashboard that you've got you're using these things and provide a a way to that thing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm of course making this up because it would be cool. Yeah, well, that's the whole idea. <laughs> Think of cool stuff. That's why we talk about these things. So, um, so yeah, I remember, um, I think in one of the student focus groups, a student was saying that she just wanted a, a widget that would link to her online textbooks. Um, yeah, so really, yeah. you know, just a place she could go, she knew that she could get to the link for her textbook. So that Did might any... be something that would be good on a course homepage, you know? Right. Speaking of students, did any of them mention uh, wanting to see statistics for the like progress stats in a widget? Um, I know the faculty talked a lot about that, uh, wanting to be able to see status. I'm trying to think. I think students were more worried about like making sure that they knew about upcoming deadlines so they could stay on track. Um, don't recall specifically them asking for analytics, but they probably wouldn't phrase it that way. Um, well, so, they want to know what their progress in the course is or how they're doing compared to their peers, especially if the instructor is grading on a curve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. I don't know. Um, so we we definitely now that the dashboard is kind of out there in the wild, it's it's experimental still. So it is in 21, um, but it's it's turned off by default because it's an experimental tool. We're still kind of adding things to it. Um, but what I'd like to do maybe later in the summer is to run some more focus groups with the tool and get people to kind of use it and and provide feedback and think about you know the types of tools that they would like to see added to it the types of widgets that they'd like to see added to it um, not unlike we're doing today but a little more structured um, so uh, yeah i do think there's a need for that okay, i see a couple things in the chat um, Jennifer says we have that as an LTI tool link to online textbooks. Yeah, yeah, it'd be kind of like that, but it'd be maybe something you could put on a a, a dashboard if you wanted to. Um, Terry says that she's been wanting a last date of attendance or participation for Title uh, Four reasons. Yeah, um, that would be that would be really useful for um, for institutions that have to mark that last day of attendance. That would be a great widget for faculty. I 
And that would actually kind of surface some of the information that I think is currently in the statistics tool, that new user activity tab. Um, maybe surfacing some of that in the dashboard would be the way to go there. There is an LTI version of, of last date of attendance that, that Lancet had written a long time ago, but it's an LTI plugin. Um, and now that the there's that activity tab in um, statistics, it, it kind of does most of what that LTI tool did. So it's a little bit better because it's native. Um, Guys can feel free to come on the mic. I don't want to have to just listen to myself. <laughs> Are you lonely, Wilma? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. um, yeah, uh, that last date of attendance, I know the information is in there. Mm -hmm. It just needs to come out on top. And, um, and I think the dashboard would be a great place to have it. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you're just using the statistics tool, the teacher or whatever is still having to go dig for it. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's not something that they really will do. Right. Yeah, the, um, the dashboard is supposed to surface those kinds of actionable things for the user. So um, that would be a great place for it. Um, let me just scroll up and actually I can I can paste this link in here if you guys want to see the notes from that session. Um, but these were some of the other ideas that came up. So um, a progress widget for students, which is similar to the idea that Laura was talking about that would show student progress um, within the course or across all courses. Um, some, some other options, maybe an accessibility um, problems widget for the instructor. Um, I'm not sure if that would be some sort of accessibility scanner, like it could show where there's problems. I'm not quite sure what that is. Is that to. along the lines of what Blackboard does? It, um, it's a separate thing that they have and they sell it for yeah. finding accessibility issues. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's that um, they have, I forget what they call it, but it gives like kind of a summary of the accessibility um, and the amount of, of problems across the course content. So it's census access, I think, that does. Yeah, and like even that. like through the documents, I think, you know, where it'll, mm -hmm. it'll troll through the PDFs or whatever. Oh, Ally, yeah, Blackboard Ally. There we go. Our, yeah. Not sure this if that's access something. is another one. Go ahead, Charles. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure if that's something I'd want to see in a dashboard or something that I that I as an instructor would access through like whatever the site info tool might become in the future um, where I could do a check there. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm sort of thinking of the dashboard from the student perspective, and I'm and I'm not sure how helpful that is for a student to see that. That's really more in, of a, an instructor focused. It could yeah. be helpful for a student if they had accessibility problems. They could be alerted that when you get to this point, this might be a problem for you. Mm -hmm. But that's just you know, highly speculative at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I think there would be certain widgets that would only um, kind of display data for instructors versus students. So we'd have to have a way to detect kind of if they have the instructor role in, in courses before it would let them see that widget, maybe. Yeah, even on the state of attendance thing, there's a difference between what the instructor needs and what the student needs. 
obviously mm -hmm. the instructor would need to see an aggregate of all his students in a course. Right. There's also always the question of whether this is appropriate as a course widget or the overall um, dashboard tool. Yeah, the accessibility one seems like it would be pretty course specific to yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. And it seems more um, useful when you're building the course versus when you're just kind of facilitating the course throughout the semester. Um, let's see, another one that came up was lessons progress. That could be, I guess, similar to the progress widget, but maybe for a specific um, thing like lessons. Um, the do soon was the one that kind of got promoted um, up as, as a favorite. Um, there was another wish for a poll widget, something that would um, would show quick polls, or maybe the results from quick polls, um, and a form widget where you can respond within the widget itself. Now we do have a form or a discussion widget right now, and um, this is kind of what it looks like. Oops, let me stop editing. Um, there we go. Okay, so it's similar to the forums um, message center uh, widget that you see in, in the overview tool. It just kind of gives you a count of new messages, new forums. We modeled it after that because um, the idea was that eventually dashboard could take the place of overview. And so we didn't want to lose this functionality. Um, but the, the idea for a, a an improved version of that was that you would actually be able to see and respond to the messages right within the widget. What do you guys think about that? There could be a link to that discussion so that you could go directly to the discussion from that link. You know, not necessarily that you'd have the whole discussion on the dashboard, mm -hmm. but, but you could just quickly get there. Right. Um, the other one is the, the meetings widget, which would show current and upcoming meetings and lets you join right from the dashboard. So um, I don't know if you guys attended this session. Um, I did a lightning talk about the meetings tool. Um, Longsight's doing a project to um, kind of enhance that tool. Right now, the meetings tool is the big blue button integration. It's an API integration. And um, what we'd like to do is, is expand the functionality of it, make it more modern looking, and also make it work with multiple providers. So it could maybe work with Zoom or with um, Microsoft Teams or other, you know, virtual meeting platforms in addition to Big Blue Button. Kind of like um, the plagiarism uh, content review can work with Turnitin or Urkund or you know whatever product you're using. So you would basically set it up to use the product that you're using and then you'd be able to use meetings as a single interface for interacting um, with that particular type of um, third-party integration. So anyway, so if we do that, um, I think a meetings widget would be really cool to have it um, on the, the dashboard area, show you any new meetings coming up and let you join right from there. All right. So Jordy is saying, I would focus more on information widgets rather than interactive ones. Is that in um, response to the meetings? or the, the forum one. I guess it could be either. So, um, let's see. Um, then there was another set of 
widgets to do with a, like a list view of the calendar, sort of a day at a glance concept. And these might also just be improvements to the calendar itself. Um, and I think that one was actually in the roadmap is some improvements to the calendar where um, if there's events happening, you could um, see the events and be able to link directly to that item from the calendar. Um, it's not in yet, obviously. And uh, there are some improvements planned around the calendar itself um, in, uh, if not 22, then certainly 23. But I think the plan was to include an upgraded UI for the calendar in, in 22, um, Sakai 22, that is. So uh, that might be an improvement there um, that would show up on the dashboard, but it's really more of a calendar improvement. So. All right, does anybody have any other great ideas? Anything that you haven't seen on here, but you think would be a really cool widget? Expression of pinned content and forums next. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, Forums Next, if you're not already aware, is the, uh, the new discussion type tool that is in development with Duke. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Um, yeah, building on Jordy's idea of keeping it informative only. Right. Okay, any other thoughts? I don't want to belabor the conversation. So there'll be more opportunities. If you come up with a brilliant idea, um, you know, let us know and we'll definitely put it on, on the list. Um, we're keeping sort of an informal list at this point, but uh, and we'll be, I'm sure, adding additional widgets um, to the dashboard. So um, we'll probably actually start a JIRA, like a roll-up JIRA for it, and um, begin adding some of these ideas that you see in this um, document here. So um, once that JIRA is available, um, you'll be able to add yours and just link them if you have another idea that's not already represented. So, um, so that way we can kind of keep track of them all in, in JIRA so that hopefully they don't get lost um, and uh, we can get them added in a timely manner. All right, um, that's all I've got on dashboard stuff. Charles, do you wanna? So if nobody here? else has any, <clears throat> sure. If nobody else has any, um suggestions from Wilma we'll move on um hmm so we have some Jira's listed in the parking lot but they all have Tiffany's name on them um I'm always hesitant to cover some of those if Tiffany's not here um I think there was one in particular that Tiffany wanted to be here for. I can't recall which one it was. Does anybody else have any Jira's they'd like to talk about? That was going to be my next question. <laughs> um, I have something that's been a minor annoyance that maybe needs a Jira. When on the lesson page, you put an item like a sub page or anything, um, somehow it draws a white border around it so that if it overlays a picture or something else that you've got on there, the picture has that white line in it. Hmm. 
I, I guess the, the chair would be worded to such as to remove those borders that are around those items. You're not, as you know, as somebody who's doing up a course, you're not putting in the border. The border is imposed in the coding somehow where it has a white border. <clears throat> and it just puts stripes in your pictures if you're wanting that picture to go into your section and you've got other things in the section. So this is when you add an, like an image as a a separate item yeah. as opposed to inserting it into a text box, right? Right. And and then um, maybe you've got a, a, a box with, where you've titled it, watch these videos, and then you have a little image that could be whatever, just an image. And then you start adding in those videos as sub pages, which we generally do, but each sub page has its own white border around it. You don't want to make a separate section because that takes up too much page for nothing. You just want that and that image to be there just for whatever reason. And it comes out with stripes from the borders of the things that you're putting in there. <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to see where it's at because uh, I've already made adjustments. So, it... but anyway, it was um, we're on 21 now, but it was also happening on 20. <clears throat> I'm looking in JIRA. I don't see an, a JIRA for that, if, uh, uh, Terry. So I think it could definitely use one. Because um, I think I know the border you're talking about. Yeah. Kind of annoying. It is annoying, especially when you want a clean image in that part of the page that's otherwise blank. Mm -hmm. in the etherpad that a gear needs to be created for that. Does anybody else have any other gears that need to be looked at? I guess we can, I can, I'm never any good at doing searches in Jira. Uh, let's see if we can find anything else here. Sorry, I'm trying to skim through a couple of things here. Mm -hmm.
There's one here about grade schema that was actually reported by Laura Geckler. <clears throat> Jordy, I just noticed the one you put in. We'll, we can return to that one in a second. Hmm. Laura, since you reported this one, do you want to? Okay, I've got to take the Wayback Machine. Let's see, from March. Not that far back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if my video tells me what I'm doing. Does grade schema numerical to letter mappings change unexpectedly? Oh. Uh. from letter grade to letter plus minus. The yeah. Aren't retained. Between those two options. Yeah, that is just uh, one of those things where people don't expect to have to re-enter everything and uh, where it could be just um, really amazing to, to have the values come over. I mean, obviously, they probably want to do some adjustments, but not major ones, especially if you went mm -hmm. from the letter grade plus the grade point and versus the letter grade. Oh, yeah, I would agree that that those mappings should be maintained or retained. Anybody else have any comment about that? Actually, I guess I should. Well, Christina comments on it. She's, she suggests that she would expect it, that when selecting a new grading schema, it would reset, reset to the default minimums. I'm not sure what I would necessarily expect it to do. Um, there's a there's a reset button, isn't there? If I recall correctly. No, I don't think so. with me a moment. I'm going to check. And she does in her comments put her finger on the issue that the instructors are losing their settings without an understanding of knowing they're going to lose their settings. Right. But I don't think adding a note to it is the answer. No, there is not an option to reset the default. Just a note that it's been modified from the default. 
I mean, there should be a return to default option, but that's another question. Well, I don't think anybody knows what the default is. It's just necessary for computers. Well, that's, I mean, I think that's something that's said at the institution level, isn't it? I mean, because ours is set at 90, 80, 70, 60 for ABCD, but I assume that's something that's customized within the instance. Right, it's not something instructors know. I forgot we took that option out because we don't allow it. I can't even look at the behavior on my instance. Don't allow what? Oh, we don't allow, we removed the letter grade plus minus option from our instance. Because our system oh. doesn't allow for, for plus minuses. So we don't even give the instructors that option to implement it within their own grade book. Got it. So the question is, what should the behavior be if you change from letter grades to letter grade plus minus? Should it revert to the default or should it retain any adjustments that the instructor may have made? And obviously, I think it should retain the adjustments. Lean in that direction. We've got another vote for maintain the changes. Any other thoughts? Another vote to maintain. Seems to be where the group is leaning. All right. Going once, going twice. Vote. Okay, <clears throat> let's take a look at the one that Jordy suggested, 4-5-6-2-5. Submission notification only to the assignment creator. Um, I assume that this is for the assignment tool. When instructors select to send notification to email to advise for student submissions, these notifications are sent to every instructor in the site. Instructors um, from our institution think that it will be useful to incorporate the option to send notifications 
only to the instructor that created the assignment. So the idea then there would be two options as far as receiving notifications for getting the assignment, that there would be an option for all instructors to receive those notifications or only the creator. My question would be is what if um, another instructor edits that assignment? Does the original selection hold or does then that instructor become the quote creator and they get the emails Terry raises a couple questions what if the creator is not teaching but just setting up the assignment well, presumably, then they'd send that they'd have the notification sent to all. Um, and she says, or if the original creator is not no longer in the course, um, that could be an issue um, if an instructor changes for some reason, but they maintain the same content. Uh, the wrong person could be receiving messages. Any other thoughts? Sure, how to deal with this. Suggestion. Uh, Mark has suggested um, generating a list that um, then uh, could um, by specific recipients. <laughs> the issue there again is if there's personnel changes after the assignment has been created. Um, Maybe you have a new TA that wasn't in the original list, so they're not getting them. Still have that same um, issue of, of personnel changing. Hmm. Yes, there, there needs to be another box when setting up the assignment. I'm not sure what to say about this one. It, it almost seems like it could cause more problems than it's resolving. Yeah, because then you've got a situation where somebody creates an assignment and for one, you know, they retire the next year or whatever. 
are they the only ones that can change the list of recipients? Well, I would think anybody that can edit the assignment would be able to edit the recipient list. That you would just be, you know, that you would just see that when you go in to edit the assignment and it would be there and it could be editable. Mm -hmm. That would be my assumption if there was a list. Um, added complexity to the interface. Right. I've got to jump, guys. Great session. Bye. Thanks. Bye, Laura. Bye bye. I'm trying to think if there would be if there would be another way rather than in the assignment creation um, for instructors to say I don't want to I don't want to receive emails about submissions I didn't about assignments I didn't create in the preferences you can you can change the priority level of notifications that you receive would there be something you could add there? Like, you know, um, I don't want to receive low priority notifications about things that are happening. Um, that's kind of a global kind of correction rather than a course specific one. <clears throat> How do, so I'm not even sure what priority those messages are sent as. Are they sent as low? Are they sent as high? Does anybody know? Yeah, I don't think they have a priority necessarily. It's something that you get automatically. Yeah, you either get it or you do. So in yeah. in, a, in essence, they're they're kind of default high. Yeah, basically. Maybe they should be medium, and you can opt out of receiving medium level priority messages. But then I guess the, the tool would have to um, be able to distinguish that the person that created the assignment should get it as high priority and anybody else should get it as medium. And if that's the case, then we still have the issue of the creator is not really the teacher. Yeah. I, I don't, um, that's, this is tough to resolve. I understand the idea of not wanting to receive messages about something that you didn't add to a course. But um, I guess my question would then be, well, how often is that an issue, I guess? Another thing to how consider is that... There's of course, that don't want to receive those messages. There's notifications on the course uh, overview or dashboard or whatever of uh, submissions that have come in. Mm -hmm. You can see that. You don't necessarily need to receive emails on it. If you've enabled that. Um, I need to drop off, but I just wanted to mention real quickly that um, we had a, a volunteer for next uh, meeting for the topic of discussion for July 7th. Um, Tonko wanted to talk about proctoring. Um, so I went ahead and, and penciled him in for the um, topic for that week. Um, but I can't be here on the 7th, so I just wanted to double check with you, Charles, to make sure that you can facilitate that week. As far as I know. Okay, cool. I have to hop off, guys. All right, thanks, thanks. Wilma.
Okay. Oh, the next, oh, that's right, we do it, oh, gosh, I forgot what we, I forgot we were second and fourth, not every other week. Um, yeah, I should be able to do that. So we are actually running a little bit past time. Uh, so thanks all for participating. I'm going to stop the recording now.